coming up on Mountain News this morning. State lawmakers are hammering out the fine details of bills as the legislative session comes to a close. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. We are coming up on 6.30 on Thursday, March 28th. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Hey, good morning, Madison. Good morning, everyone. As we now look out to the east and see a little twilight trying to take place, you see the cloud cover issues continue to hang out above us. Uh, temperature wise, we're back at 36 here in Hazard. We're going to lose those cloud cover issues as we hit through today. High pressure building in and the nice weather will be lasting into the weekend, which is good news. Kind of concerned, though, about those Easter egg hunts on Sunday morning and the temps after today are running above that average high of 62. You're going to love the prospects of Good Friday tomorrow. Temperature wise this morning, all in the 30s, minus Grundy at 41, Harlan, Jonesville, Middlesboro and Jacksboro. You're along at uh, 41. We've cleared out though toward Irving and uh, 28 that way. Irving, Irving. All right, satellite with a composite showing the cloud cover issues across the region. High pressures building on in. That means we got a beautiful afternoon and a great day for Friday. Check it out, hour by hour, becoming mostly sunny today, a high of 58. More about your first alert seven-day forecast through the holiday weekend in a few moments. Madison? Tim, thank you. Frontier Behavioral Health opened a new facility yesterday with a special guest. The Martin facility is now open with 16 beds to serve to serve men in addiction recovery. The space has programs to work with patient sobriety, then works with other agencies and programs on employment, education and more. Governor Andy Bashir was there for the grand opening, saying it is a sign of progress to have the organization working to help people get their lives back while in recovery. That regardless of how many mistakes you've made in your life, you are still a child of God. You deserve dignity. And that second chances aren't just the right thing to do. They are what we are called to do. The new facility is already planning to expand and a new women's facility is on schedule to open this summer in Pike County. Governor Bashir was also in McGoffin County yesterday afternoon where he joined local officials for a ribbon cutting ceremony to open the new McGoffin County Career and Technical Center in Salyersville. There are just a few days left in the 2024 legislative session in Frankfurt and the biggest priority remains passing a two year state budget. Today is the last day before the veto period begins. Kentucky lawmakers were back at the Capitol yesterday debating a number of bills that includes a bill dealing with NIL for collegiate athletes and another bill to set up a new commission for horse racing and gaming. Three other bills were approved yesterday morning in the House. They now go to the governor's desk. The sponsor of a $300 million bill to address child care is apparently dead for this session. The Kentucky Lantern reports the bill's sponsor, Senator Danny Carroll, says there was a there was wide support for his proposed Horizons Act. There is some new money in the budget for child care, but Carroll says it's a shame his more ambitious bill won't make it into law. Federal COVID relief money that helped daycare stay afloat is running out this year. As the session winds down, several retiring lawmakers were honored on the House floor yesterday. That includes Lexington Democratic Representative Ruth Ann Palumbo. After 17 terms and more than 30 years in the legislature, she is the current longest serving member of the House. Representatives Derek, Inc Derek Graham and Kevin Bratcher and Josie Raymond were also honored. A back and forth plan to change Kentucky's open records law moves ahead with state lawmakers. We told you about House Bill 509 last week. Yesterday, a Senate committee approved a version of the bill. Despite changes, critics say it still weakens Kentucky's open records law by creating loopholes. Emails and texts about government business sent from an official's personal account 
or device would be off limits. The bill's sponsor says it updates a law crafted long before electronic communication. So this bill lives on the fault line in between the public's right to know and the individual's right to privacy. And uh, as such, there is some heat and pressure on that fault line, which uh, we've all experienced in recent <laughs> days. It's that democratic government depends upon the informed and active participation of its citizens and requires that government bodies protect the citizens' right to know. Critics include the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. It questions limiting information for journalists reporting on behalf of the public. The bill now heads to the state Senate. A huge fire in Bowling Green was able to be contained yesterday. It broke out at Valor Oil Company and the smoke could be seen for miles. The St. Joseph Interparochial School had to be evacuated due to the fire. Two oil company employees were taken to the hospital for mi minor injuries. All seven Bowling Green fire stations responded with assistance from other departments. It is unknown what started the fire. A Floyd County man is in jail after police say he uploaded sexual images of kids on social media. KSP's Electronic Crimes Branch launched an investigation and later interviewed Matthew Williams. Detectives shared William Detective searched Williams home Tuesday. He faces multiple charges that are Class C and Class D felonies, which are punishable by anywhere from one to 10 years in prison. Williams was taken to the Floyd County Detention Center. Brian Wesley Bailey, a former Letcher County teacher charged with rape, was in court yesterday for a bond hearing. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us what happened. Right here in the Brian Wesley Bailey was back in the Letcher County Circuit courtroom. This time, the defense and prosecution discussed his bond, which is currently set at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Your Honor, this is a uh, motion to reduce my client's bond based on two. Bailey's attorney, John Combs, argued for a bond reduction. Combs said they should reduce it to a property bond and allow Bailey to be incarcerated at home. My client is, is a well respected. Combs argued Bailey is a quote, well respected member of the community in Harlan County, end quote. Combs also added Bailey has no criminal history. In this case, the Commonwealth agrees the court's bond is appropriate in this case. Nick Whitaker with the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office argued against the bond reduction, saying it would quote, depreciate the seriousness of the allegations, end quote. He also added social media allows people to contact anyone from anywhere. In this jurisdiction alone, in the recent years, people have been released under home incarceration on sexual offenses and have attempted to reach out to the minor children. Judge James Kraft said he would review the bond. Whitaker asked if it is reduced that the property be appraised first. In Letcher County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. A Lawrence County man is facing charges after police were called out to a home about a reported stabbing. The incident happened last weekend at a home in Louisa. According to an arrest citation, the altercation reportedly came about over a mom joke. In the citation, 51-year-old Matthew Savage pushed and cut the victim, who was a minor, with a knife. The victim was taken to Three Rivers Medical Center. Savage was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. The Wayne County, West Virginia Sheriff says a jury duty phone scam is circulating. Sheriff Rick Thompson says the office has received reports of scam calls claiming someone missed jury duty and there is a warrant for, for their arrest. The caller reportedly requested a payment of $500 to clear the warrant. Thompson says the Sheriff's Department will never request personal or financial information or attempt to solicit payment on the phone for any reason. In Pulaski County, an electric company is warning of a door-to-door -door scam. They say people are knocking on doors at homes that use South Kentucky RECC for electricity. The scammers use the excuse of discussing electric meters and solar energy, but South Kentucky RECC says they have no connection to the company. The 2024 Student Technology Leadership Program Championship was held yesterday in Lexington. Hundreds of students of all grade levels presented projects. Students also took on each other with various robotic challenges. 
Kaylee Ross of May Valley Elementary in Floyd County created a Google site out of love for her pets. It's an informational Google site designed to help people learn how to take care of their pets or is designed to give people ideas to get new pets. Most of the robotics challenges included coding robots to do certain tasks. And a good Thursday to you. Temperatures seasonably cool across the eastern half of the Bluegrass State. We have cleared out, though, as you make way from Irvin, back toward Lexington and Moorhead, as well as Somerset. In the meantime, we're in the lower 40s from Harlan, Jonesville, Middlesbrough to Jacksboro. We'll also throw Grundy in coming in across the state line at uh, 41. All right, here is your satellite radar composite. Here are the cloud cover issues still prevailing. They'll kick out of here over the next few hours as high pressure builds on in and gets us into a mostly sunny sky from the morning into the afternoon. So, yeah, this morning may not need the shades, may not need the sun visor down, but you will for the drive home. Our forecast high this afternoon and hazard up to 58. All right, holiday weekend. Something very important on Sunday. Well, spiritually and for the kiddos. We'll detail that all coming up in a few moments. Madison? Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 640, still to come on Mountain News this morning. New video this morning showing the Francis Scott Key Bridge just moments before the collapse.